Kanye West entered the music industry with the belief his success was promised. I'm not gonna say it's not a way that I could fail, but hopefully with God's blessings, and I got Chicago on my side, it shouldn't, it shouldn't be no way for me to lose, really. And from critical to commercial success, it appeared the artist's prophecy was spot on. But since the loss of the most important person in his life, <laughs> That's my favorite song. Kanye's career has been fraught by scandals, scenes, and worrying proclamations. That's one doctor that said that that was the beginning of a slope. More and more, it seems the rapper's refusal to conform has gone from what made him a star to what makes him a threat not only to himself, You, you don't saying. care. I do care. You don't care about me. You don't care about my people. But to a specific community. It's abhorrent behavior. I hope he gets help. I hope his children get mm -hmm. help from him. Mm -hmm. Even though he is bipolar, he still needs to be accountable for what the f he does. Mainstreaming these ideas is incredibly, incredibly, incredibly dangerous. Now Kanye has come forward to speak his truth about his mother's passing, and it's shocking. My mama was sacrificed. All of this leaves fans, commentators, and business partners with one question. Has Kanye finally gone too far? In an era when every up-and-coming rapper was trying to emulate Jay-Z, Ice Cube, Nas, or other hip-hop hall of famers, Kanye never tried to be anyone other than Kanye. I rap the exact image that I look like, and a lot of real people would be like, I actually go through that, like, I'm not in the streets like that, I'm not really that, that rich. And while Ye's middle-class upbringing in Chicago suburbia and preppy fashion sense might not have supplied him with street cred, it did foster an ego. Man, I got aspirations, I got big dreams, man as well as the talent to back it up. Through revolutionary production skills and emotionally vulnerable lyrics, Kanye's built an enviable catalog of hits, won 24 Grammy Awards, and has come to be considered as one of the most influential hip-hop artists of all time. And the genre-defying artist hasn't stopped at music. Kanye started his own creative company, launched his own Yeezy fashion line in collaboration with Adidas. He even opened his own chain of fat burger in Chicago. Add in a business mogul wife and four children, and it appeared the rapper had everything. So why have Kanye's recent actions left his career, businesses, and family in shambles? To understand where Ye is today, you have to understand his relationship with his mother and, more specifically, her passing. Donda West was an English professor, her son's manager, and his biggest supporter. Did you hear me? I was like, Kanye! All right! Give it up! But on November 10th, 2007, the mother Kanye described as his everything passed away. While her life ended the day after she received multiple surgeries, including liposuction, a tummy tuck, and a breast reduction, the ultimate cause of Donda's passing was heart disease. But it seemed Kanye only blamed himself. If I never moved to LA, she'd be alive. I don't want to go far into it because it will bring me to tears. The rapper told Q Magazine in 2015, Netflix's Genius, a Kanye trilogy, captured Kanye's entire career before and after Donda's passing. On a hunch that Kanye's talent could take him to rap superstardom, Clarence Cootie Simmons and co-director Chike Oza started recording footage of Kanye over 20 years ago, before his debut album The College Dropout had captured the world's attention. The result of their work was a three-part documentary, along with an intimate understanding of who Kanye was and what was most important to him, his mother. This made her passing all the more tragic to director Cootie. I couldn't imagine the pain that Kanye was feeling. Donda was his everything. The director had seen firsthand how close the mother and son's bond was, and was even asked to put a tribute together for Donda's funeral with the footage he recorded. You the best mom. Oh. <laughs> but the loss of Donda seemed to flip a switch in Kanye, as the years following her passing were riddled with controversies for the rapper. Whether it was by describing himself as the voice of his generation in 2008, interrupting Taylor Swift's VMA acceptance with an I'ma let you finish in 2009, saying he was God in 2013, coming to the defense of Bill Cosby in 2016, or suggesting 400 years of slavery was a choice by African Americans in 2018, Kanye's antics had found the rapper in hot water time and time again. But no amount of backlash could stop Kanye from speaking his mind, no matter how controversial his opinions were. And the rapper's political endorsement was just as polarizing to some of his fans in 2016. I told y'all I didn't vote, right? But if I would have voted, I would have voted on Trump. 
In 2018, the rapper tweeted that both he and Donald Trump had dragon energy and that Trump was his brother. He continued to say, I love everyone. I don't agree with everything everyone does. That's what makes us individuals. And we have the right to independent thought. Ye's politics were shocking to fans familiar with his upbringing. Both my parents were freedom fighters, Kanye told GQ in April 2020. But to the rapper, their mindset was the same as his own. They used to drink from fountains they were told they couldn't drink from. And they used to sit in restaurants where they were told they couldn't eat from. They didn't fight for me to be told by white people which white person I can vote on, the rapper told the magazine. And it appeared Kanye's parents also didn't fight for him to be told he couldn't run for president. As on July 4th, 2020, the rapper officially entered the race tweeting, We must now realize the promise of America by trusting God, unifying our vision, and building our future. I am running for president of the United States, 2020 vision. In the end, Kanye only qualified for ballot access in 12 states after missing the deadlines for the rest, excluding California, where his ballot inexplicably added Rocky De La Fuente as the rapper's running mate. Still, the rapper received around 70,000 votes in 12 states, the seventh highest vote count out of the candidates. But presidential aspirations and controversies didn't sway Kanye from what he built his career on, music. In August 2021, he released his 10th studio album, Donda, a 27-track album named after his late mother, whose passing still weighed heavily on the rapper, according to those who knew him. Ulysses Blakely, a boyfriend of Donda who'd known Kanye growing up, thought the rapper's scandals traced back to the loss of his mother. My personal feeling, just from the person I know, is that this is unresolved grief, Ulysses told Page Six in 2020. Whether or not grief was the catalyst for Kanye's actions, it was clear the rapper wanted to honor his mother's legacy. It was in 2021 when the public first caught wind of Kanye's Donda Academy. Good morning, Donda! Good morning, Donda! Good morning, Donda! Good morning, Donda! But it seemed the rapper's Southern California-based Christian private school for grades K through 12 had earlier origins than the public realized according to a 2022 Nightline interview with Kanye. We're on our third year, we have 82 students. While NDAs signed by parents have kept the institution shrouded in secrecy, what we do know is that Donda Academy boasts small class sizes, a basketball team made up of prospective NBA athletes, and a unique mission. To be a performing arts school, to be a design school, an architecture school, a farming school, and also to teach the gospel. But while the school might seem like it's out of a CW original with uniforms courtesy of Balenciaga and Yeezy, there was something missing beneath the institution's flashy exterior, credentials. As of now, Donda Academy is not accredited, meaning seniors who graduate might not have their diplomas accepted by universities. But Kanye's seemingly sporadic business and political ventures have some fans worried. See. The rapper's mental stability has been a concern since his 2016 St. Pablo tour, where he endorsed Trump, Oh yeah, I'm about Trump tonight! Shaded Beyonce, Beyonce, I was hurt! And called out his one-time idol, I right here, changed my life. And longtime supporter, Yay West, hot, fire, <laughs> put my money on it. Jay-Z, Jay-Z, call me bro, you still ain't call me! With performances defined by moments like these, the tour ended early, with Kanye's hospitalization for stress and exhaustion. But it wasn't until 2017 that the rapper revealed his diagnosis, bipolar disorder. In Genius, a Kanye trilogy, Kanye opened up about the contrast between his life and his mental state. I already had the house and the wife and the kids and the plaques, but all this type of shit would still have moments where I felt like, you know, here still have moments where I'm addicted to and don't even realize it. Knowing Kanye's headspace, Cootie found it difficult to see the rapper become a media spectacle. They were calling him crazy, but to me, it seemed like he was crying out for help. And while Kanye had always been a controversial figure, something about his current behavior felt different to the director. In the past, Kanye might have rubbed folks the wrong way. But for the first time, it felt like he really lost the people. In December 2018, Kanye announced he hadn't been taking his medication for six months, tweeting, I cannot be on meds and make Watch the Throne level or dark fantasy level music. The rapper seemed to have conflicting feelings over his diagnosis, as evidenced by his album art, lyrics, and ever-changing perspective. Have they guess ever been like locked up in handcuffs and put into a hospital because your brain was just Okay, I have. But by early 2021, 
it appeared Kanye's refusal to medicate was putting a strain on his marriage with Kim Kardashian. She loves Kanye and always will, but he isn't willing to remain on his medication and to do what it takes to make it work. An insider told The Sun in January 2021. A month later, Kim filed for divorce. But any effort to end their divorce on civil terms was quickly squashed when the reality star entered a relationship with comedian Pete Davidson in 2022. Yee posted private text messages he'd received from both Kim and Pete, released the song Easy featuring the game, which threatened Pete both lyrically and with a disturbing video, and even removed Kid Cudi from Donda 2 because of his friendship with Pete. Or as Kanye referred to him, you know who. After Kim and Pete broke up, Kanye continued to communicate with Kim through public means, whether that was by apologizing to her on Good Morning America, saying he lost his queen too on his Instagram story after the Queen of England passed away, or accusing Kim of kidnapping their child Chicago after he wasn't invited to her birthday. But Kanye's tirades were about to fixate on a new target, one that would align the rapper with the darkest sides of human history and allow once scorned prejudices to seep into the mainstream. Political differences, egotism, self-destructive behavior. For many, Kanye's music triumphed over all of this. But was the rapper's talent enough to blind the public to the dangerous territory he was treading in? Kanye's recent string of controversy traces back to October 2022 at one of the biggest events for designers in the world, Paris Fashion Week. This was where Kanye chose to premiere his White Lives Matter t-shirts alongside conservative political commentator Candace Owens. That statement was not well received. Vogue contributing editor Gabriella Carafa Johnson described the t-shirts as pure violence, stating on Instagram, there is no excuse. There is no art here. Jaden Smith tweeted, I don't care whose it is. If I don't feel the message, I'm out. And one rapper and old friend even contacted Kanye directly, Sean Diddy Combs. The exchange, like other attempted private conversations with Kanye, ended up on the rapper's Instagram. But amid Kanye's pleas for Diddy to fight him and statements of love was a troubling accusation. The rapper claimed Diddy was being controlled by Jewish people. He wrote, I'ma use you as an example to show that no one can threaten or influence me. I told you this was war. Following this, Kanye's Instagram account was restricted, and it seemed the rapper was making similar anti-Semitic remarks on other online platforms, as his Twitter was also suspended following a tweet he made about using DEF CON 3, a level within the US Armed Forces alert system. But Kanye didn't believe he was disrespectful, implying he is Jewish. And while some attributed the tweet to a bipolar episode from Kanye, others weren't as eager to let the rapper off the hook. I don't think y'all can just put this on manic episodes because you are removing so much agency from Kanye. This is a man who continuously espouses white supremacist language. While Kanye's history with mental illness couldn't be denied, various online posts pointed out that anti-Semitism and bipolar disorder are not mutually exclusive, with one Twitter user writing, Kanye needs help, no doubt. Mental illness does not cause anti-Semitism though. That's just who he is, a piece of who needs major help. It was around this time that Kanye was interviewed for Fox News' Tucker Carlson Tonight, where he spoke about his presidential aspirations and recent scandals. But it appeared not every moment from the interview made the cut. On October 11, 2022, Vice's tech division Motherboard released previously unseen footage from the show that wasn't seen as suitable for broadcast. These moments included Kanye's claim that Margaret Sanger, an activist with controversial opinions about genetics, and an infamous racist organization had created Planned Parenthood to control the Jewish population. This isn't true. Planned Parenthood is simply a non-profit organization that provides reproductive health care. Although Kanye wasn't really talking about Jewish people. I mean, the 12 lost tribes of Judah, the blood of Christ, who the race, the people known as the race black, Really are. According to Motherboard, Kanye's statements are likely a combination of two far-right conspiracy theories. One, that Planned Parenthood was created to terminate the pregnancies of African Americans, and two, that the African race is the real Jewish race. Neither of these claims are rooted in reality. But even Kanye's statements that seem to uplift the Jewish community on the surface. I prefer my kids knew Hanukkah than Kwanzaa. At least it will come with some financial engineering had origins in the anti-Semitic belief that Jewish people control the financial system. To those unfamiliar with anti-Semitic talking points, it can be difficult to separate a compliment to Jewish culture from a threat. TikToker Jamile Cannon explained the difference between the way Jewish prejudices manifest versus those involving African Americans. Stereotypes about Jewish people are different. They control the media, they stick together, they keep their money to themselves. Those stereotypes paint a different picture. 
picture of a group of people who can compete with, outperform, and even subjugate white people in the open market. These are the same stereotypes used to define the enemy in Germany, which makes their presence today all the more concerning. Why were white supremacist groups walking through Charlottesville chatting Jews will not replace us? Because while black people were painted to be a drain, Jewish people were painted to be a threat, and they have very specific ideas about what to do with a threat. They just need more support for those ideas. But while Kanye's posts and comments made it seem his crusade against Jewish people was a recent development, it appeared the rapper may have had a history of anti-Semitism. See, the Tucker Carlson interview wasn't the only piece of media that supposedly edited out Kanye's statements. Van Laffen, a former TMZ staffer and co-host of the Higher Learning podcast with once bachelorette Rachel Lindsay, claimed Kanye's recent comments came as no surprise. After all, he'd allegedly heard them all before. I knew that that was in him because when he came to TMZ, uh, he said that stuff and they took it out of the interview. This was the interview where Kanye claimed slavery was a choice and Van shot back at the rapper telling him to look at the real life consequences his words could have for those that weren't in his position. But according to Van, it wasn't only Kanye's comments on African Americans he was addressing, but others that were edited out of the interview. He said something like, I love him. I love nice. um, something to that effect when he was there. And the real twist? This happened in 2018, four years before Kanye's recent streak of anti-Semitism. When I saw this, I was like, oh, I knew that this was eventually coming. As a matter of fact, I had anticipated it coming like way earlier than this. Similarly, David Letterman's Netflix show also allegedly edited out anti-Semitic comments from Ye, but it seemed audiences' memories couldn't so easily be scrubbed clean as multiple members recalled the rapper referencing the former ruling party of Germany. But with Kanye's beliefs on Jewish people now public, it appeared the rapper's words no longer needed to be edited out. On a since-removed episode of the podcast Drink Champs, Kanye again came after Jewish people, this time for both planting stories about him in the media and silencing him. They blocked me out. The Jewish media blocked me out. Ye also blamed Jewish people for the recent backsliding in his career. According to the rapper, his White Lives Matter shirts were printed by Dove Charney, a Jewish man who now refused to release the merchandise. And he's telling me like, yo, I want you to visit the Holocaust Museum. And I was like, yo, I want you to visit Planned Parenthood. That's our Holocaust Museum. Kanye also cited the Jewish media's reaction to his shirts as the cause for venues refusing to host him. When I wore the White Lives Matter tee, they, I had four SoFi Stadium shows. They canceled my shows. Ye also made an appearance on News Nation's Cuomo, where he was grilled by the show's namesake and host, Chris Cuomo, who urged the rapper to consider the dark stain anti-Semitic thought had left on human history. They've been targeted before, they've been abused and killed because of what they believe and who they are. But while Chris wasn't sold on Kanye's narrative about Jewish people, others were inspired. On October 22nd, a hate group displayed their admiration for Kanye's sentiments by setting up a banner over the 405 freeway overpass in Los Angeles that read, Kanye is right about the Jews. But while groups like these rallied behind Kanye, the rapper was alienating the general public. On October 24th, Variety reported that data from Luminate showed listening to Kanye albums has dropped by 23%, and radio play has also plummeted, with certain stations refusing to play the rapper at all. Various members of the Kardashian clan spoke out against anti-Semitism, including Kim, who tweeted, Hate speech is never okay or excusable. I stand together with the Jewish community and call on the terrible violence and hateful rhetoric towards them, to come to an immediate end. Fallout continued as the rapper was dropped by his talent agency, law firms, TJ Maxx, Foot Locker, The Gap, Balenciaga, and Adidas, a cutting of ties that hasn't stopped Kim and Daughter North from sporting the latter two brands in a recent TikTok. Even a tattoo removal studio in London has started offering free removals for anyone who is regretting their decision to have the rapper or his lyrics permanently etched on their skin. And while Kanye appeared to try to find a new collaborator for Yeezy Shoes when he showed up at Skechers headquarters uninvited, the rapper was promptly escorted out, and the company has since stated they have no intention of working with West, given his recent statements against the Jewish community. Kanye's sports marketing agency, Donda Sports, also appeared to be taking a hit. NFL player Aaron Donald and NBA player Jalen Brown both terminated their partnerships with the agency, with Jalen Brown stating, I work hard to, to be able to have the platform um, that I have. I use it to be a voice for a voiceless, so I had to do 
what we had to do. And it seemed even Donda Academy was feeling the after effects of its founder's explosive comments. The institution allegedly contacted parents in October, stating the Academy would be shutting down immediately and its doors would stay closed until September 2023. But only four hours later, it appeared the school had a change of heart, as a follow-up email stated Donda Academy was not shutting down. In fact, the institution was returning with a vengeance. Still, it appeared the future of the Academy students was still on shaky ground, specifically the basketball team. Various tournaments have banned the school's team in protest of Kanye's comments. But according to further allegations, it seemed Kanye's recent statements only scratched the surface of his anti-Semitic beliefs. Several sources who'd been close with the rapper told CNN that he had a long-standing obsession with a certain German dictator, Red Mein Kampf, and had even wanted to name his album after the leader of the Third Reich, but instead went with Ye, a more palatable choice. Rolling Stone also reported that Kanye paid a former employee a settlement after the rapper allegedly used business meetings as a space to praise the fascist ruler of Germany and his party. Ye's alleged obsession with this ruler would continue in a December 2022 interview on Alex's Jones Infowars broadcast. Alex defended Kanye, claiming he's not similar to this ruler and was being demonized. Kanye didn't take offense and and for the very first time, the public would witness Kanye verbally praise the former ruler of Germany. I see good things about him also. And it wasn't just one time. I love Jewish people, but I also love Nazis. Kanye went on. There's a lot of things that I love about him. And on. I don't like him. And I know you're trying to be shocking with that. I'm not trying to be shocking. I like him. Ye also falsely claimed the former ruler of Germany invented the highway and the microphone. He used this as an argument to sympathize with the ruler. You can't say out loud that this person ever did anything good, and I'm done with that. I'm done with the classifications. Every human being has something of value that they brought to the table, especially him. Ye even went so far as to deny Germany's tragic history during the 1930s. And Kanye's admiration for the leader and his party showed no signs of dimming. On December 2nd, 2022, Kanye again tested the limits to freedom of speech when he tweeted, Ye24, love everyone, with an image of the Star of David combined with a swastika. And while the rapper hashtagged the post love speech, it seemed the tweet leaned more towards the opposite end of the spectrum, as Elon Musk suspended Kanye from the app for potentially provoking violence. Elon claimed he personally wanted to punch Kanye. The image Kanye used in the tweet potentially originated from the US Raelian movement, which has since called out Kanye and Elon for misinterpreting the symbol, tweeting, the Star of David represents infinity in space and the swastika infinity in time. Our official symbol is love and can be found around the planet in countless cultures and scriptures. Following these anti-Semitic displays from Kanye, Reddit users repurposed the rapper's subreddit into a memorial to the lives stolen by the historic crimes against humanity in Germany, with choruses of Never Again and tributes to victims taking the place of content previously devoted to the rapper. Longtime fans also began parting ways with the rapper, with one popular post titled This is now a Taylor Swift subreddit. We had a good run, fellas. Many others agreed and some expressed their regret for the way they treated Taylor in the past. But as sources, companies, and former fans continue to speak out against Kanye, the rapper is not without supporters. While there are thousands of fans who pledged an unbending allegiance to the rapper and believe his impact on the music industry outweighs any controversy he could possibly tangle himself in, there's another side of the internet that isn't guided by loyalty to the rapper, but drawn to the rhetoric he's preaching because it mirrors their own prejudices about Jewish people. As one supporter wrote, This is big. Bigger than music. Bigger than money. I have more respect than I've had before for his stance. As for Kanye, the rapper who once prided himself on his wealth has reportedly slid tax brackets as his net worth allegedly dropped from billions to 400 million after losing his Adidas partnership, leaving the construction of his new Malibu beach house in limbo. But according to Kanye, the loss of his billionaire status was an act of God to bring the rapper back down to earth. How could the richest black man ever be humble other than to be made to not be a billionaire in front of everyone off of one comment. And a more recent update suggests Ye's recent business losses have done nothing to shift his perspective. On November 11th, The Shade Room posted a paparazzi video where Kanye went after a group he only referred to as they. They could control Shaq. They could control Charles Barkley. They could control LeBron James. 
They can control Jay-Z and Beyonce, but they can't control me. But knowing what group of people Kanye believed was capable of enacting control over celebrities, it's not hard to surmise who the rapper is referring to. Kanye continued to say he only served God since the loss of his mother, a passing he seemed to believe wasn't as innocent as it appeared. My mom ain't here. My mama was sacrificed. Ye then connected Donda's passing to the passing of Michael Jordan's father, Bill Cosby's son, and Dr. Dre's son, seemingly hinting each loss was a part of some larger conspiracy. He went on to claim the unnamed group he was speaking about had dirt on Meek Mills and Diddy, but not him. I never killed nobody, right? I'm the person that never killed nobody, right? But that means I could say whatever I want and not go to jail. And it may be true that Kanye can say whatever he wants, as it seems despite the rapper's business losses, being deplatformed online, and viral callouts, Ye still has his fans hanging on his every word. You got us, bro. You Look at that. Even, even, even God's before, on your side, man. Even, God is on all our side. God yes. is Amen. alive. Amen. Yes. As the Instagram account Jewish LGBT pointed out, Kanye's combined following on Twitter and Instagram amounts to over 49 million followers, an amount that outranks the world's Jewish population over over three times. If even a portion of his audience is convinced of his views, well, history supplies us with disturbing evidence of what happens when a group of people is vilified to this extent. When anybody who knows anything about Jewish history hears these comments about hoarding wealth and about greed, it's an immediate red flag that violence is to come against the Jewish community. Kanye's statements are rooted in far-right conspiracy theories, the type that embolden people to treat another group as subhuman and adopt an us versus them mentality. But there's another question that the recent backlash over Kanye has aroused. Why now? Calling slavery a choice didn't destroy Kanye's career, neither did describing racism as a dated concept. These comments were never edited out of interviews or seen as reasons for companies to no longer work with the rapper. As Arnett Owens tweeted, Fact. Before Kanye West was the face of anti-Semitism, he was one of the hip-hop faces of misogynoir, noir, anti-blackness, Trumpism, and slavery denial. And y'all still gave him contracts, documentaries, endorsements, clothing deals, and millions that became billions. Shame. In the end, it's possible Kanye's real critique is the media's control over artists and culture. We are controlled by the media, and today it all changes. But while the rapper seems to want to build a better world, we have the resources on this planet to have a human utopia. And use his influence for good? You know, I'm not gonna be completely happy and completely satisfied to the world is completely satisfied because, and the world is completely happy because that's the position that I've been put in. Stigmatizing a group of people doesn't only cloud his message, it creates a new storm. As Kanye's grip on reality continues to be questioned, Y'all already black mirrored me. You already made everybody think I'm crazy. You already took my family away. And his ideals continue to radicalize. I told y'all I was the leader. I told y'all I'm gonna free my people mm -hmm. in the name of God and I will put my life at risk. Time will tell if the rapper will be remembered for his artistic pursuits. The main thing is getting to do something that you really love to do. His political aspirations or something even darker. When you target people because of their faith, other people may do so the same. This is the story of Kanye West, the rapper whose legacy is still being written.